Good evening, everyone. And uh, I will be talking about machine and art. Usually, people think of well, machine and art completely two different things. I also have a, I, I have a hobby project that is a bit related to this topic, and it's uh, about music and the machine. And when I talk this, uh, pr this idea to my father, he is like, what? You are going to destroy the beauty of music. And I will say, OK, OK, but whatever. <laughs> but machine and art, are there any? And art is always uh, uh, referred to as something uh, creative. And are there any links between machine and art? And one side is very simple and accurate. Uh, it's a bit uh, the older type, uh, older type of understanding of machine, but it's uh, it's uh, characterized as uh, simple and accurate. And the other side is complex and intelligent. Are there any links between these two? Now I will I will start from how how human uh, sense art. So every Every form of art, in the end, it will, bo it will boil down to uh, one of the five human senses. Uh, so there is a sight, there is a hearing, uh, there is a smelling, and there is a taste, and there is a touch. And among these, for example, when hearing, there is a lot of digital instrument. And the, among the left, uh, the left one is a drum machine where you can create patterns. and. Uh, the bottom one is an electrical brass or something you can blow to and you can make create uh, music. Uh, Yamaha invented it and uh, there is a Japanese fusion band using that a lot. And on the other side you see a synthesizer where you can create all kinds of, uh, uh, all kinds of voices and create music. And that's how it's related to uh, hearing. And then how it's related to sight. In the, mi in the middle, you see the demo of the Google Tilt, uh, uh, Google Tilt brush. And uh, it's, a, it's a virtual reality based app. So you are allowed to draw in the 3D environment. And more than that, not only drawing in the static color, you can basically draw a tube of uh, twinkling stars. And how amazing is that? Designers are already crazy about that. And there are cameras where you can capture the beautiful moments. And there is also that, uh, the newly, uh, newly released Microsoft Surface Pad or Surface Tablet, the fancy one, the most expensive one, even more expensive than the MacBook Pro, where they use the pen that you can, uh, that you can press uh, press it harder or lighter and to create different uh, uh, styles. And the, it looks on the screen, you can also have a knob where you can tune your colors. So these are the instruments that I see that uh, help human to create art that in the end we sense by our sight. And there is also touch. What is that? Uh, for touch, it's a bit... Uh, uh, it's a bit pre, um, it's a bit uh, less advanced than the other two, yet what you see in the middle it's a haptic feedback screen. So this is a typical demo page of that haptic feedback screen. That means when you f you move your finger through uh, these patterns, you are going to feel the texture of it on the screen. And uh, the application of it uh, um, are like playing games, and you can have a, a ball, and you can directly through some uh, some obstacles with the haptic feedback. But this is about uh, the touch. And when machine evolves, it becomes more advanced, and it steps into cognition. That means machine starts to understand art and help human to create art. And what is there? I will just give a very short introduction about uh, w one of the most popular uh, technology behind all these, that is deep learning. It's deep learning, actually, it, you, it's, it's just a fancy term. But what you see there is like, it's like uh, all the binary trees. On the first level, for example, you say, what I'm going to do this evening? Maybe I want to go out 
maybe not. And the left uh, and on the right is uh, if say this is not and this is maybe. Uh, if the weather is good, maybe. If the weather is not good, no, I'm not going out. If Eton is here, then I'm going. If Eton is not here, then I'm not going. So it's simple as that. And uh, as a binary decision tree, in the end, you make a complicated decision based on, uh, on your situation. And all what uh, all those uh, researchers are doing are trying to make it better and make it faster. But with this technology, here you see some results. On the on this picture, it's uh, it's uh, Google or Microsoft managed to uh, explain what is in the picture just by analyzing the picture. So now machines are able to say, hey, this is a person, this is a car, this is a helmet, this is a motorcycle. But nobody understands how machine managed to do that. And on the right side, it's a paper. It's about the speech recognition. I remember when it was, uh, when, uh, it was uh, somewhere in the 1990s, when people start to use uh, voice, uh, uh, voice input, so try to speak to computer instead of type to computer. I had to train the software for half an hour to let software recognize my voice. But uh, then somewhere in the 2000s, there is a technology breakthrough. Then they start to use this deep learning technology and now the accuracy has uh, dramatically increased. So what I can do is I can say, OK, Google, and it will, OK, Google, it will start listening. So that's, uh, so machines start to understand voice and picture. And to make it a bit more advanced, this is uh, the brain brain wave sensing. So what is uh, so what is you you see here is uh, this guy is wearing some whatever goggle, and uh, he is having a, a, f a robot arm, and uh, somehow he can control this robot arm by thinking. And uh, here you see a map. This is uh, some principle about, uh, behind it. So by me me measuring these, these, these locations on your, on your scope, and with the deep learning technology, it is possible to understand what you are thinking, what you are feeling through those electrodes. And, and here I will also mention what uh, I told my father about, about my music project, that is, uh, I want to I want to use machine to, 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 to understand the chords. So music has the uh, music, or let's say popular music has some kind of chord, and the chord has some uh, theory, complicated theory behind it. And I feel myself not good at it. So I think maybe I can use this deep learning technology since it's already so good at understanding pictures, understanding voices. Maybe it's also good in at understanding music. So if, if I can ask a machine to, to say, hey, what is the chord on this, uh, in this music, then I can better have music. And then my father said, no, you are not doing that. You are destroying the beauty of music. But this is all about how machine can understand art, yet we do not know why. And since we do not know why, we also do not know where it will go. When machine comes to the reaction phase, then we see the Google Magenta project. Google Magenta project is uh, announced uh, some uh, one or two years ago, and it's to use a machine to create art. Now, uh, I do not know exactly the progress of this uh, project. It's been, a, it's always been a pro popular project on the GitHub, and. Uh, I've also seen there are the machine created masterpiece of art, abstraction art. That machine draws something that nobody understands, but whatever. And there is also this uh, talk bot, talk bot, and this is a table, I think released by Microsoft, uh, some earlier this year or last year. Yet it is taken offline after a few weeks because the table became racist, but. No one understands why, because it was not racist in the beginning, but after a few weeks it became racist. So 
somehow it's uh, it's evolving and it's learning and and from all these so machines start to to create art and human can use machine to facilitate them to create a better art and then machine starts to create art itself so what is the link behind it here I would like to refer to Kevin Kelly this guy has written a series of books about technology uh, one of which uh, he has uh, pro he has proposed a theory of technium and uh, where he is uh, saying machine is evolving she, he and then he uh, he said when the model is simple then we can make sure that it's also accurate it's like a clock it always ticks but when the machine but when we want the machine to fit a more complicated model we have to sacrifice this accuracy so when the model becomes more complex it also has intelligence so he says that machine he compares machine to uh, biology so he says machine will evolve machine will want to grow and machine will want to duplicate itself yet i think in the end human is like the teacher of the machine anyhow whatever machine will create it's a reflection of human ourselves and thanks that's all my that's my talk Thank you.